Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, July 29th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Starting out today with a couple quick updates regarding some of the data feeds that we offer on our website. Two new data feeds here. First one that lists cloud IPs, IP addresses being used by various cloud providers. Now, right now we sort of have the top five cloud providers or so, but working on adding more to the list. So if you have any that I missed that I should add, please let me know. Secondly, a feed that I call the Intel feed. Now, that's really just sort of a list of uh, around the top 50,000, just the top uh, significant IP addresses that we have and a couple attributes for them, like, for example, which ports they scan, if they're scanning ports, SH scanners, but also things like, for example, name servers for top-level domains. So certainly things that you don't want to block or if you see some misbehavior, you probably do want to know about. Take a look at the diary for more details or just see isc.sans.edu slash API for details. And Emotet is adding some new tricks to its arsenal in addition to just using a user's email box to come up with contacts and email bodies to sort of inject itself into existing conversations, Emotet will now also look for existing attachments that are sitting in the victim's inbox and then reuse them in order to spread itself. So uh, this is supposed to make Emotet more plausible and make it more likely that a victim will actually activate it. And Adobe released another update for its e-commerce software suite Magento. And unlike the updates last week, this is one that you certainly have to take quite serious. Magento has been a favorite target of attackers like MageCard and all the other sort of e-commerce hacks. Now, uh, this particular set of vulnerabilities doesn't look all that uh, important at first. Well, uh, two are rated as critical, actually, two as important, but only one actually works pre-authentication. And uh, the one that sort of looks the most dangerous, a path traversal with arbitrary code execution, also requires admin privilege. But uh, there is one that I want to point out, uh, CVE 2020-9691. At first of all, a DOM-based cross-site scripting. Cross-site scripting is always underestimated. This vulnerability does not require authentication, so it's pre-authentication, and it can lead to arbitrary code execution. Adobe is very brief in these advisories, so there are no details how this can lead to code execution, but maybe if you put it together with the path traversal vulnerability and you actually get an administrator exposed to whatever you're injecting with this DOM-based cross-site scripting, that could then lead uh, to worse things. Like I said, cross-site scripting often underestimated and how it's being exploited is often only limited by the attacker's creativity. Well, anybody remembers Dogecoin, the cryptocurrency that was sort of created as a hoax, but then actually took off and gained a value like most of these cryptocurrencies. Well, it's now being used as a command control channel for a new botnet. Apparently, this botnet is infecting exposed Docker servers. So again, the vulnerability here is nothing really all that exciting. It's someone setting up a Docker server and not setting up a password and then being surprised that their containers are getting compromised. The malware that uh, in teaser uh, did call a docky is special because of the command control channel. Now, some of the news reports sort of had big headlines that it's undetectable. Well, it is actually very well detectable, just a common antivirus doesn't have a signature for it yet. 
Yes, and this malware essentially then uses the Dogecoin uh, blockchain in order to find out what's the host name of uh, the command and control server, and then essentially uses uh, ever changing host names in order to obfuscate this command and control channel. But by using Dogecoin, there are actually also then DNS lookups for dogechain.info. That's the host name used for the Dogecoin API. And so that's, I guess, how you could actually pretty well detect it. As a dynamic DNS service, this botnet appears to be using the DNS.net. I guess this could be considered another way to detect uh, this botnet, uh, but then again, the DNS.net, I believe, is a commonly used uh, public dynamic DNS service, so you will see some benign traffic there as well. Well, and that's it for today, so thanks again for listening, and uh, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, in about two weeks on August 10th, I will be teaching our Defending Web Applications class as part of our European Cloud Summit, so it will be on European time, and yes, it will be all online. Thanks, and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.